Saturday Night Live is a major staple in American comedy. Or at least it was before it started to get stale. No itches, no scratch. My booty feels so snatched. Thank you, Shaman. Yeah, thank you, Shaman. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's the writers. Maybe it's the writers. It's definitely the writers. But hey, we still have those classic moments to go back to. Like Samurai Delicatessen or Gumby. One of the biggest things, of course, when it comes to Saturday Night Live, is their celebrity hosts. Every week or so, they'll have a brand new host come in, write some sketches of their own, star in sketches of their own, and just make it their own show. But sometimes, these celebrity guest host spots don't exactly pan out according to plan. Sometimes, Lauren Michaels, the guy who runs the show, will veto a guest host idea because having them on would be a total disaster. And that is most certainly the case with today's subject, the most tragic Saturday Night Live host of all time, Milton Berle. I'm gonna tell you why he's the most tragic host in all of SNL, but I want to say this. A lot of this video is gonna sound pretty negative towards Burl, saying that he wasn't funny here or that he was a bad host. I will say objectively he did a bad job, but I'm gonna explain why, above all things, he's probably a victim of time and circumstance, really. So, let's get into it. For those who don't know, Milton Berle is a classic old-timey comedian dating back all the way to vaudeville. That's right, he was there when the Three Stooges got their start. Let that sink in. So, Milton Berle was gonna be a guest host on SNL, and right away, people were kinda apprehensive, especially Lauren Michaels. Uh, so, a thing about Milton Berle is that he is not easy to work with. But not in the same way that someone like John Kay is difficult to work with. On top of being a pedophile, John Kay's just generally lazy, hard to talk to, and is a dangerous perfectionist. Milton Berle likes to think he's the captain of the ship every single time. He'll step in, he'll take over a project, and if it doesn't go his way, he'll either get mad, or he'll talk down to people, making them feel lesser than him, so that way it can be the Milton Berle show just like how he wants it. Still, a majority of the cast members were very excited to have him on, and at first, it was going very well. He was telling them about all these old stories from when he was an old-time entertainer. But then, they got to writing the script. It became very clear that Burl hadn't changed at all since his heyday. He thought he was still doing some kind of 50s or 60s show and wrote the script accordingly. There were a lot of spit takes and immigrant jokes and gay jokes and just a lot of things that didn't really age well even back then. Of course, these things can absolutely be funny, but there has to be a joke behind them. For example, during the third season, when Drawn Together does racial humor, they either make it so over the top that you can't help but laugh, or they have a legitimate punchline that relates to the story and or character. But when Milton Berle did his stand-up routines and little jokes in the sketches about these things, it was just Arabs, am I right? And that was about it. There wasn't any joke or substance, it was mentioning a taboo subject at the time and expecting the audience to laugh. And spoiler alert, they didn't laugh. Oh brother, this guy stinks! The other cast members tried to tell Burl that they needed to ramp up the comedy because everything felt so dated, but Burl kept assuring them, Nah, nah, this is how it works. You're getting two laughs for the price of one. You know this is great, come on. And then he flashed them all with his giant penis. I'm not joking. He actually did this because this is a thing that Burl used to do all the time. I guess Burl was known for being uh, well endowed, let's just say. So he would flash it around to people showing it off. And everyone was kind of looking at him going, okay, this is a thing that's happening. I don't know why it's happening, but it's happening. This is my life now. I got to rule with it. I got to go. The night that this episode premiered was a disaster. First of all, Burl planted somebody backstage to draw up a pipe in the middle of his monologue so he could transition into some improv and really wow the audience. But a lot of people have since reported that even though Burl planned this, when it happened, he still got legitimately angry. I'll explain why in a bit more detail in a little while, but I just wanted to let you know that it's stuff like this that really makes it seem like Burl was planning this to be some sort of grand comeback. 
Like this would be the big thing that would thrust him back into the spotlight. Sadly though, it didn't work. Another thing he did was also plant a bunch of people in the balcony to do a standing ovation when he had this pretty heartfelt monologue about show business. And honestly, if I didn't know that this was some kind of vehicle to make him an A-list celebrity again, I would have thought this was a pretty touching moment. A guy looking back on his long career and saying, well, here I am now with a whole bunch of new comedians ready to take my place. I've had such a great time. But it really amounts to the speech in Arthur Christmas where Santa is saying, oh, I've loved my job and I can't wait for next year, and he refuses to retire. Also, he mentioned more Puerto Rican jokes and Hawaiian jokes, and they did not go over well at all. He had to keep stealing a Rodney Dangerfield joke, asking people for their library cards or if they were hard of hearing because they weren't laughing at all. It got so bad that during this one luau joke he made, that just so happened to be a sexual innuendo, you can see him start to lose his temper. Take a look at this. Last night by mistake, I, I walked in the wrong door, knocked on the door, girl opened the door, she said yes, I didn't even ask her. <laughs> <laughs> Every, next door to my room must be a Hawaiian honeymoon couple. Of course, all night long I heard the girl yelling, luau. <laughs> <laughs> Can I see your library cards tonight, please? <laughs> yeah, that's not good. A lot of times when comedians are bombing on stage, they tend to mask it pretty well until they get off stage, then they can let loose. You can see here that Burl isn't used to messing up or not going over well with the audience, so he doesn't know what to do. And I also like to think, this is totally unconfirmed, and now that Milton Burl has since passed on, I think it's impossible to tell, but I think this is when Burl realized that this was not gonna go well. This was gonna be a mess. If these jokes that worked really well back when he was popular were going over poorly, what was gonna happen with the rest of the sketches? And sure enough, they all bombed. First of all, Burl was barely in this episode. He was only in about three sketches and all of them were painful to watch. None of them were funny, none of them were timely, and keep in mind, I love old comedy. The Three Stooges, I Love Lucy, Adam's Family, and even Leave it to Beaver. But the stuff in the Milton Burl episode, that's just awkward. For one thing, they're not really jokes, they're stereotypes of jokes. Nothing new, nothing inventive, just the kind of thing that you would tell if you were portraying a parody of old comedians, rather than try to entertain a then-current-day audience. And secondly, you can tell when a joke in a sketch was written by Burl, because the rest of the cast seems to lose their focus and has their energy levels drop by half. No one wants to do this, no one thinks it's funny, but they have to do it anyways because they're under contract. That's never a good sign. And then the episode was over, and that was it. The reviews were extremely negative, and then the episode was never rebroadcast again. You can find it on streaming services and all, but if you're looking for a TV airing, not a chance. And the fallout was so bad that Burl received the extremely rare status of being a host banned from Saturday Night Live. There have only been a couple hosts throughout the entire run of the show that have ever been banned from coming back, and Burl was one of them, and honestly, I think he's the one I feel the worst for. Yeah, Burl kind of tried to take over the show and make it Texaco Star Theater. He showed people his penis. He made some really awkward jokes about gay people and minorities, and not in any way that's really funny. But still, I really feel bad for him because... Remember when I said he was hoping this was gonna be this big breakthrough and people were gonna care about him again? In the end, it only solidified everyone's opinion that Burl was washed up and had nowhere left to go. This was the nail in the coffin. The same thing happened to Lucille Ball. Not with Saturday Night Live, but with another show called Life with Lucy. Lucille Ball just refused again and again to accept the fact that times have changed and people's interests have shifted to something else. So she made a show in the 1980s called Life with Lucy that was basically I Love Lucy again, only this time she's playing the grandmother character instead of the young wife. And it was such a big failure that the network came in to cancel it right in the middle of filming one of the episodes. And after the show was canceled, Lucille Ball became depressed and a recluse and never did anything noteworthy again. And I have a funny feeling that the same thing happened to Milton Berle on Saturday Night Live. 
As we can see here, because Burl didn't want to admit that his star had gone out, he was constantly surrounded by reminders that he was living in denial. The pipe incident, the spit take scene, the scattered groans from the audience that I'm sure were there. By the end of the night, Burl had to realize that, sure enough, it was time to retire. His modern day fandom, if you will, was a very niche crowd that couldn't give him the services that he required. And that's one of the biggest problems with success. If you find something that works, you'll become blind to time passing, and to you, you'll always be on top, even if no one else seems to agree. And then when the truth is revealed, it hurts on a devastating level. You can't let it go, you can't roll with the punches, and you can't change. Burl didn't change, so he got left behind. In the years after this episode's premiere, the cast would soften their views on Burl and say exactly what I just said. And that really? They weren't angry at Burl, they just felt sorry for the guy. And I agree, this is a really sad episode of SNL. This whole thing can be described as, old man has an existential crisis about his existence, the show. You can point and laugh at him getting actually mad at the pipe dropping incident, or you can laugh at the fact that the only people who stood up for his standing ovation were the people that he paid. But I don't know, I couldn't do it. I just saw this whole thing as a tragedy in more ways than one. But a tragedy of, oh crap, no one cares about me after all. That's the story of Milton Berle, the most tragic host that Saturday Night Live has ever had. Well, folks, thanks for watching the video. What'd you guys think? Have you seen this episode? What do you think about Milton Berle? And if you don't know who he is, what'd you think about his appearance here now that you've heard about it? Comment below and let me know because I'm always excited to hear what you guys have to say. And now it's time to thank our wonderful Patreon friends, starting with our Masters of Fate. Manny Paredes, Kev, Leaf Storm, Ryan Williams, Chan Eleven, Woody Woo, MD the Dude, and Diego V. And now our executive producers, Unkale, Blackjack, Edward Haas, H.R. Hoffman, who else but Zane, YouTube Milkwad, Albert Robinson, I am Fove, Aaron Vasquez, Ravioli Supremo, and Indiscreet One. If you too would like your name read at the end of every Media Mementos video, then why not consider donating to the Patreon? There's a link in the description below for you to check out. And if you want to get more involved in the Media Mementos fan community, we've got a Discord server. There's also a link to that in the description as well. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Luau!